Hello and welcome to another episode of my narrated rolling uh, footage where I uh, analyze some of the roles I have with my friends Jason and Gosha in their white basement uh, dojo. Uh, this week I want to focus on uh, an area that we don't really teach specifically as a technique and that's unbalancing. I suppose it's very similar to the judo term kazushi. But in this case, I wanted to simplify it. Uh, unbalancing is something that you'll want to do preceding any submission and any sweep. And uh, you tend to do it just through experience of repetition and continually doing the technique. But in this case, I wanted to practice specifically uh, my K-guard. K-guard is something that's new to me. Uh, and I've been just, just dabbling with it. and I've been trying it in all my roles. And I realized that to make it work, especially K-Guard, the unbalancing component is key to its success. Uh, something that uh, one of the instructors I've been following, Neil Melanson, with his K-Guard tutorials, is very, very keen to stress. So we'll look at a few examples here in my videos, uh, my running videos here. The first one is with Gosha. So we'll just have, have a look, we'll slap hands. Grab hands, I pull guard, pull open guard, see how wide my legs are and I just immediately get that sort of twisted knee and hip position, which is symptomatic of, of the K-guard. Now, what I want to do is reach my uh, right hand underneath her leg, but Gosha is sort of basing up, so it's a little bit hard for me to get there. Never mind, I just play normal uh, collar guard. There we go, I've got my hand underneath, and then I'm getting my hips up high, which is another feature of the, the, the gi version of a K-guard. And here I'm, I'm, I'm creating that unbalancing all the time I'm trying to be active, a little bit of inversion there. And Gosh is pushing my feet apart, but it doesn't really stop the unbalancing component of the guard itself. Unfortunately, uh, with the Gosh's back there, you can't see what I'm doing there, but I still got K guard. I've got my hand trapped underneath her leg and my legs are in that twisted position. Um, and it really disrupts the top person's uh, ability to sort of posture upright and, and sort of maintain a, a stable position. So from the K-guard, you can get all sorts of submissions. In this case, I, I get a sort of omoplata and roll her over into top position here. Um, you can ignore the next bit. Can I, I kind of fluff up the technical mount, <laughs> uh, as is my want. Uh, Gosh is very good at defending mount and back. She wriggles out of all the attempts I have. And as I say, it's not my specialty, but I, I try and get the back here. Maybe rush it a little bit. Gosha does a very good job of positioning her body sideways and she sort of, uh, that's it, she just gets on her knees and bases out of the, my attempt to take her back. Not very successful there, but I carry on. Uh, playing an, an extended open guard here, very, very long reach. I'm using the full length of my limbs there. And that's really to set up a person. So by extending my legs and my arms out, I want them to put pressure into me and then I will collapse my limbs so they're kind of caught in deeper in my guard um, that's with a lot of open guards that's the tactic especially k guard as well i'm not using k guard here i've got to so i don't know what i'm doing i'm reaping the knee to be honest um let's have a look so from this seated position double guard pull if you like gosha is also seated she comes up to combat base stands up tries to pass my guard and i think i, I can't quite see let me see did i get k guard there let's have a look let's rewind that sorry we're just going to rewind that bit do I hook my arm? Yes, I do. I hook my arm underneath her leg. So she's standing up. This is a standing up version of a K-guard. And again, it's even better for unbalancing and sweeping a person because you can get right underneath them. There's space to invert. Uh, I, I'm not a fan of inverting. Obviously, I don't want pressure on my neck and my back too much, but K-guard somehow makes it uh, quite accessible, even for an old geezer like me. So I'll put this out of shot. So look, we'll move on to, that's the end of the round. So we only have three minute rounds. We do four, we do 21 rounds, uh, two in, one out. So at the end of the hour and a bit, each of us will have done 14 three minute rounds, uh, which is which is good training, really good. You know, it keeps the pace high. Okay, so I start this round with Jason. This is interesting because I do a really, <laughs> look at his single leg. I don't even come up. I just take his weight on me. Almost a bit like how you would, pull deep half guard, but I don't do deep half. And there, there's there's an unbalancing bit. It's not K guard, but I, I'm, I'm really looking for that opportunity to unbalance him, especially when I can hit something underneath the armpit there. We'll just look at that again. 
So this is a nice little bit, something that I'm, I'm especially from Turtle and all these inverted positions. Something I picked up from Raul's, Raul Oldhoy's video uh, on attacking from Turtle. This little space here, let me get my pen out. This little space here, can you see I filled it with my bum and the direction of my travel is this way. And uh, because Jason's elbow is so open, it's almost like um, a free sweep, if you like. It's so easy to encourage their, their body movements to go in that one direction. And in the fact, that's what I do. So there we go. Roll forward, sweep there. And you almost invariably will have access to the legs. In this case, I get a toe hold. But you can also switch to the upper body. You can get triangles, arm bars. And it's an area that I'm really focusing on. So although this doesn't show K-Guard, this does show attacking from the turtle. And the opportunities you get. See how Jason's elbow is still very open out here? There's a lot of space there. If I can get sort of underneath here, well, I don't in this case, but uh, that, that would have been an opportunity. Here I'm playing sort of a regular open guard here. My hooks are inside. And we're just sort of fighting for grips. I've got my left foot on, wedged on his bicep here. So by, and my right foot underneath is. So we'll just stop it there because these are some interesting hooks. I play this a lot. So one of the things I'm, I'm very interested in is um, looking for places where I can just place my foot here. You can see I've got my foot. So I've got three points of contact. Actually, I've got four points of contact. I've got a point of contact here, here, here. And you can't see, but I've got, I've got, I'm doing something with this arm. I'm probably gripping his sleeve here. So with those four points of contact, and with my twisted body position, uh, again, it's not K-guard, but it's, it's related, I can get a really nice sweep out of this. It's all about unbalancing my opponent, just trying to take away his ability to base out. See, I'm, I'm twisting, and it's constant movement where I'm trying to create like a rolling ball effect. And so there I get the sweep. All I need to do is come up, but instead I don't. I attack for the foot, unwisely perhaps. It wasn't a great position. I recognize that it's not going to be successful. So technical stand-up, and then now we're passing guard. And now it's Jason's turn to unbalance me. So I've so I've overshot my mark here. My head is too far forward. I'm basing my hands up, but it's not very good. All Jason has to do is come up, and he's unbalancing me. So two very good examples how we're using our body position as well as taking away any opportunities for the person to base out to create the unbalance, which then subsequently leads to a sweep. Um, we're fighting for guard here because of my twisted body. It's a weird position. And Jason starts passing my guard. Now, although, uh, again, I'm wedging my shin against his arm here, which prevents him passing guard. And we're in this sort of stalemate here. He wants to pass, but I don't want him to pass. I can't really sweep him from there because I'm very static. There isn't any of that unbalancing. So this is a situation where any attempt to unbalance is, is uh, futile and stuffed by Jason's body move. So he goes for a sort of, I don't know what he does there, a lapel style bow and arrow, but I get out of that one. Again, in Turtle, saved me so many times from Turtle. But I'm very active from this Turtle. I don't want to sort of stay there anymore. I don't want to be a target. So with my Turtles and my sort of submissive positions, if you like, my, my pr prime aim is to really bust out of these spaces here. You can see my head poking out under his armpit. I'm really looking for these spaces where um, el Jason's el elbows opened up. Uh, okay, I bail from that position. What else happens? He turns around to get my back, but I'm in this walking position and spin rounds. I chance myself with this triangle. Not a great triangle. Terrible posture, but you know, it was it was worth a try. It just it just to go, goes to show that even from these very defensive postures, if you can find space and find the leverage and the space and take away the ability to base out, um, you have a chance not just to escape, but even to create submissions. So that's all I wanted to show today. Uh, unbalancing my opponents uh, and generally finding the space under the armpit to push them uh, and manipulate it as opposed to maybe sort of grabbing around the neck or the head or the collar, which would, it's still part of your armory, but I'm, I'm adding new uh, hand holds and footholds and, and placing wedges in places that I wouldn't normally do before. Uh, my eyes have more, been more open to what my opponent is doing and that creates more opportunities. So hopefully I'm going to continue building up my K guard uh, as well as my other open guards and see if I can take more advantage of this over the next few weeks and months. And you'll see a lot more of this uh, in the videos, hopefully in the future videos as I publish them. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching.
and uh, uh, feel free to comment. But if not, then uh, wait for my next video. Cheers.